following interview was conducted with Shannon Drew, past president of 2009 of the Purdue Student Union Board for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, March 25, 2010 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome to them. Thank you very much for this. Thanks for having me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you were, were born and parents and siblings in early years? Okay. Um, I was born and raised in uh, Jackson, Missouri, a little town southeast Missouri. Um, we have a, my mom's side of the family is from that area. Both my parents worked for Procter and Gamble down there. Um, when I finished sixth grade, uh, my dad was transferred to Cincinnati, so we lived there, and I went. I finished high school there, and then my mom. We followed my mom's job to Batesville, Indiana, and now. Uh, I go to Purdue here. We've lived there for the past six to seven years. Um, I have two younger brothers. Uh, Chris is a freshman at IU. I know, forgive him, but he goes to IU. And um, John just started high school at uh, Oldenburg. It's a town near Batesville, a uh, private Catholic school. So we all get along really well. We have a lot of fun. Absolutely love my family. Um, both my parents work hard. They're both engineering as well. Um, my dad's a Kimmy, so I followed, kind of followed in his footsteps a little bit, and my mom's uh, engineering management, so she does a lot of HR work. Super. Tell us about high school. What, were there student activities, and how large was the school, and any teachers that kind of stick in your mind? Yeah, um, I went to high school. I actually had a kind of a unique high school experience. I went to an all-girl Catholic school, um, so it wasn't really big. It was about 600 students total. I had about 140 in my graduating class. Um, high school activities, I was... Um, I did yearbook editing all three years and was editor-in-chief my junior and senior year. Um, and then I was also my senior year. My junior year I started a uh, community service program called Adopt a Grandparent with a local nursing home. And then my senior year I served on the community service uh, leadership board. Um, absolutely loved high school. It was a good experience. A lot of people are like, how can you stand all those girls? But it's just like a sorority. Only it's for four. It's for four years, and it's. A, right. I don't know. It's a lot of fun. And I always tell them, you know, though, you remove the guys, and a lot of the drama goes away. It's really easy. Um, as far as teachers that stand out in my mind, all of them were excellent teachers. They really cared about the students. I think the one that's there's two that stand out the most. One is my chem chemistry teacher, Miss Oberman. She um, she really knew how to like get us excited about chemistry, which is kind of a hard subject, I think, sometimes yeah. to get students excited about. Um, and the other one is my AP bio teacher, um, Mrs. Dietz. And she, um, I actually started as a bio major before I switched into chemical engineering. And she, she, I don't know, she was just really excited about what she did. And I thought it was always so cool that she, um, she loved what she did. She loved her students. And, and she impacted that to, to the students, which is great. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Were there any um, clubs that you belonged to, too? When you were there, any student clubs? They have any or not? Um, so well, all of course the yearbook was one. Yeah, the I yearbook knew. was one, and then the community service stuff was my other big one. I think those are my main two. I was also part of National Honor Society. That was an organization that we had. Um, Tell about that program. Is it still going on? Mm -hmm. uh, do you go out to? Do they go out and spend some time at the nursing home? That's very nice. Oh, the adopted grandparent program. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, it's actually really still, I just got the, our alumni bulletin, and it's one of the biggest community service projects going on at our high school, um, and they did a feature article on it, and the students, the nursing home we go to, um, it's kind of an assisted living situation, so they're not completely confined to the area, and they have family that visits and such, um, but they absolutely, we do like a Valentine, we did a Valentine's Day party with them, and we just go and sit and talk, and to hear their stories is just it's so funny, and they're, they just have so much, I don't know, they just have so much to tell and so much wisdom, I think. And they're I happy think. to share it. Yeah, the that I yeah. experience. People, even the ones that have been retired for some period of time, they have a, you know, much to contribute, and it's great. Yeah, exactly. So, um, then how did you happen to decide to come to Purdue? Um, well, my we knew we were going to be going to Indiana, oh, so okay. it was uh, going to be in-state for us, which was nice, because um, a lot of the girl, I'm the only one from my graduating class that came here, um, a lot of people decided to go to Ohio State, because that was the in-state school, um, but I knew I wanted to do science, at least, and Purdue had a really good science reputation, um, and it was between here or St. Louis University, and I told my mom, I said, you know, Mom, I did 12, 13 years in parochial schools. I loved the experience. I loved everything it gave me, but I think I'm ready to move out of that a little bit. And so uh, that was kind of the deciding factor that helped me decide to come to Purdue. All right. Did you come to Day of Dan? Did you come for Day on campus? Too? Yes, I did. Okay. And when, now, let's talk a little about college. What you're mm -hmm. majoring in and your activities, and then from there, 
I'll ask you some things about the student union board. Okay. Um, I'm majoring in chemical engineering. As I mentioned, I started in biology. I was going to do pre-med. Um, and then after my freshman year, I had an internship that summer in academic research and decided that if med school didn't pan out, I didn't want to be doing academic research. It just wasn't for me. Um, so I decided to switch into chemical engineering, which has a little bit more flexibility and opportunity after graduation. Um, so I switched into that. Have been thrilled ever since. Um, I've I've interned the past two summers with Procter and Gamble, and they've. Um, I'm really. I just. I wake up excited to go to work, which is really something to say when I got to be there at 6:30 in the morning. But I love what I do when I'm there, and the people I work with, and it ended up being a really nice fit for me. Um, as far as activities, my biggest one all throughout college has been producing a union board. I joined my uh, first semester freshman year. I went all the way through first semester senior year. Um, it's been a phenomenal experience. I absolutely loved everyone I got to work with. And the, the I was talking with my mom the other day about the growing I've done since freshman year to senior year and how much I can attribute that to Purdue or to PSUB um, and Purdue in general, but PSUB especially and the leadership development and things that I've gotten from it. Um, so that's been kind of the mainstay organization. Um, as far as other ones, I've joined Omega Chi Epsilon. I'm a member of that, which is a um, honors fraternity for chemical engineering students. And I'm also uh, this year a member of Mortar Board class of 2010. Good. So. Good. How did you happen to, uh, for the researchers, before we talk about the, the uh, challenges of the Tell what the Purdue Student, what the, the organization is. Uh, yeah. The Purdue Student yeah. Union so Board. The researchers don't be, uh, for them, they will be able to. Okay. Um, what we do is we are the programming board for Purdue's campus as well as the liaison between the student body and the union. Um, so we kind of serve as the union's voice for what the students' needs are and what they need from their union. Um, we, are, we plan over 100 programs a year. Everything from We do series events. Um, one of the big ones this year was trivia night that we did. We do flicks at Fowler, um, which is a big, it's been a big long-standing film series here. Um, we do battle of the bands, things like that. And our focus is on alternative programming, so especially during Grand Prix week and things like that. We try to provide some of the late night programs. Um, so that's, that's been our big focus, and like I said, we always were asked to serve on different uh, work groups and things within the union to kind of help the development of the union and how it can better help serve Purdue students. All right, okay. Now let's talk about then the challenges, initiatives, and programs which you've undertaken during your term in office. Okay. okay. Um, coming into and my you've got a large, there's a large, the board, or for the researchers, you see their picture, you've got a large board. Yes, yes. Our, um, our entire organization has about 100 members, and then the board is made up of four executive members and eight directors, so it's 12 members total. Um, during my term as president, we had four major goals coming into the year. Uh, they focused on marketing, they focused on programming, communication, and um, really just increasing our name around campus. Um, so some of the things we tackled was how are we going to get people to know about our events because that's our biggest thing is how we increase attendance and increase awareness about what we're doing. Um, and our, we have a, a vice president position actually in charge of that so she kind of headed that up but uh, we had some new initiatives go out, some different marketing things we did and we worked with other student organizations to get some more marketing resources out there. Um, one of the other focuses was on the communication piece I mentioned. Um, that was one of the big things that had been on the to-do list for a while was to um, edit our bylaws and our constitution. Our bylaws hadn't really didn't really reflect what our operating procedures were, um, so we went through like and so many of those things they need yes. to be done, but it's not. It's like a procedure manual. Whatever. Yes, exactly. Um, so we actually did get that accomplished during my term. We. Um, and a lot of it was creating accountability for our members because we were having trouble with retention rates and we were having trouble um, with people feeling responsible for, for what they needed to do within our organization. Um, so we did go through and add, um, you know, if you don't fulfill your responsibilities, this is your consequences. And we kind of added some consequences to that and, and some accountability. Um, some other things we did, one of the... Um, we had some personnel things that we had to deal with as far as, like I said, keeping one of the biggest challenges always is keeping member morale up because people get tired, and, and we're volunteers. We're students, we're volunteers. This is outside of what we do for homework, and so keeping people interested and wanting to be there. Um, and we and had participate and join. Exactly. And we had a fabulous VP of personnel, um, Agnes Blout. She was just phenomenal. She defined the role of what, what it takes to motivate people and um, I think 
I think we made a lot of headway during my term. At least I like to think so. Um, but I, I enjoyed the team and I enjoyed working. And uh, I don't know, I came in and you always think about, well, how can, I, how can I propel my organization one step further? And so I think with the help of the entire team, we were able to do that. We had a lot of new programs come in that year. Our attendance um, went up both semesters. Um, and we got increased funding a little bit from the allocation that President Cordova granted student organizations, which was nice. So we were able to bring in some more things um, and reach more students. Yeah. What was one of the u unique ones? Do you have a uh, special program that you think that was a new one this year? Or was our, I think our most successful new program has been the Trivia Night. Every year we have between 10 and 20 teams show up for it. Pappy's is absolutely packed. It's such a hoot to go and see all the teams and how, like, what their just what their names are the names they come up with themselves and they get um some of them are really good we <laughs> i i joined you get I, a prize too Does yes oh. if you um if your team wins each member of your team up to six members gets like a ten dollar gift card to the union super yeah that's at least like two or three coffees from starbucks so um <laughs> at least at least so right. so um but yeah it's i think that one is the one that has really kind of taken off on its own and really really done well this year. Let me talk about the films. Um, mm -hmm. You have a committee. You run the, are those pretty well attended? Yes. And you got, the, you put your flyers around in, in the cases and, and uh, it's nice to see that Stewart Center case being used because mm -hmm. people walk by there all the time. You know? Yeah. It's very visible. Um, yeah, w those are pretty well attended. And when I actually started my freshman year, it was a weekly series. So every week we had a new movie. And during that time attendance was really lagging just because it's hard to get movies that people want to see every week and we do pre-home release meaning they haven't been released on dvd but they're out of the theater um so we my sophomore year we cut back to only do it um once a month and since then our attendance has been a lot better um, we've had a couple of really good directors for that committee the past couple of years that have really uh, focused on marketing and getting word around and doing more of target marketing that's something we kind of preached a lot because on a campus of 40,000 students, you're never going to reach everybody. But if you target who might be interested in that movie... And that'll uh, get, get moving. Them. Exactly. Yeah. We've, um, we've had a lot more success with being able to get our attendance and people interested in the programs. Yeah. People, even such as well, myself or others, there's so many things going on on campus. And it's really... I think you have to know... I think you need to know where the calendar is and the, the sources that you can check all the time because... And I think the electronic has certainly enhanced that rather than the flyers that are all around. Yeah, you know, exactly. People, they're, they're scattered and you may or may not see them. Yeah. So I think this is works out. Um, leadership, your thoughts on a leader's role in academia and the professional world? Um, I was thinking about this question because you said yeah. it to me beforehand. I'm not really sure how to answer the academic one. I mean, I can, I can say how it affects... At college. Exactly. Can, right. I can see how... I can tell you how it affects... I think the students that choose to get involved, I think it uh, enhances their education 100-fold. I think that, um, you know, when I was interviewing for jobs and for my first internship and stuff, everything they asked me, all my examples came from my leadership experience. They did ask me a couple technical questions, I guess, that were curriculum related, but right. um, most of them were, you know, how do you deal with groups of people? How do you interact? What's your leading style? How do you, you know, faced with this difficult personnel issue, how would you handle it? Um, and I think that stuff that it can be, I mean, you can you can learn strategies and things in the classroom, but I think first and foremost, it's the experience that counts the most. And I think um, knowing, going back to my personal development, just what hand to different situations, my ability to know what to do and to handle them now is so much better than when I came in as a freshman. So um, you've learned a lot. Yes, and exactly. You valued it. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I think I think leadership development's vital for a complete education. Um, as far as in the professional world, I think that it's like I said. I think it, it just merges into it and it makes your your transition almost seamless. Um, obviously, you're going to have a couple hiccups and some different transitions, but that transition is even is that much more smooth based on. You know, you're just applying it maybe to a bigger organization or you're applying the same skills. Um, and I think that it's important to be able to to work with people and to be able to manage a team. I think that would be my biggest thing because you're always going to have, you're never going to be able to do everything on your own. And so being able to know how to, how you know, like make your timeline, be able to say like delegate your different tasks. That's one of the biggest challenges I think some people have is learning how to delegate. And I think, yeah, I just and think. And do it well and not be afraid that, you know, maybe I'm, 
shifting at the oars or pulling back or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Well, one of the biggest problems, at least in PSUB, that we have is, you know, you attract all the leaders, the people that want to be involved, and so they have a tendency to want to do everything themselves because naturally you think you do it the best. And I remember one of the first retreats I went on with PSUB, they talked about delegation and they talked about, you know, you have to learn how to delegate. It's not just you tell somebody to go do something. You're enabling that other person to be able to do the task. And so it's really, it takes time to delegate. It's almost, Sometimes it's more difficult to delegate than to do everything yourself because you have to teach them how to do it and you, you have to be patient with them. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges for a lot of leaders is learning to step back and say, okay, it's your turn to take over now. And we know you can do it and try to keep that push and then, you know, you start and then go for it. That's right. Um, that... Uh, President's Forum that Keith Crouch talked about uh, these um, leadership imperatives, and I wondered if we had any kind of challenge the process, inspired a new, a shared vision. These are some things that I just thought, uh, you know, he's the chair. Have you met him? I have not met him personally. He was um, at our Mortar Board Leadership Conference. He spoke. I was going to ask about that. Too. Yeah, I had, to, I had to leave early, so I didn't get to hear his speech specifically, but the, the overall conference was a huge success. Um, but as far as his different things, I was reading over those, and I think that they – they define what coming into a presidency and really heading up an organization or any kind of um, institution uh, really entails. You know, the, the whole challenging the process, you need to come in and, and be able to th say, well, why are we doing it this way? Are we doing it because it's the way it's always been done or are we doing it because it's really the best way? And, and being able to then say, you know, you have to, I think there's a balance between tradition and, and being new and changing things. And I think finding that balance is really important because you, you don't want to come in and completely upset the system. Everybody's frantic and it's a little bit chaotic. So um, I think that was a good one. And then what was the other one? A couple of them are, sometimes he has a uh, but. Uh, I think the one that spoke to me the most was um, enable others to act. I think, um, you know, over my four years, I've loved having people share their experience with me and helping me learn and develop and I think um, one of my favorite things is getting to mentor younger students I think it's great I think it's it's important it's a it's a necessary thing that as a developed leader or someone who's had the opportunity to develop as a leader we need to um, give back to the new students that are coming through and I think you know the more I think about it the more I'm like you know I'm gonna be sad to leave Purdue I'm gonna be sad to graduate and move on but at the same time it's time it's time for me to be able to pass the torch and hand it down right. um, and so I think that's one of the ones that I think is just so I mean you're sad it's like those bittersweet things you're um, when I was leaving piece of in December it was like I'm really going to miss it next semester. What am I going to do with all my time? But at the same time, you know, I had I stayed away. I didn't go to the office for the first two months because you need to be able to let those new leaders find their place and their leadership style and not have feel like you're looking over their shoulder or influencing them. But they know so, you're available. Yeah, exactly. How do you handle things? Things may not may or may not have worked out. How do a leader? Some everything isn't always going to work out. You're right. It's not. <laughs> you're never going to get everything. Hundred percent. It's difficult for some people to handle it. They I can't understand. I think so. I think, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a challenge. It is a challenge. It's a, it's a big challenge. It's learning to, um, I, there's a prayer that I always say, and it's grant me the, the wisdom to know what I cannot change and accept it and move on. That's not exactly how it goes, but that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm um, and I think that that's so true. It's, um, you need to be, a, you know, fight the fight, stand up for what you believe in, and you know, do the things that you think need to be done, but you're not going to win everything. You know, we had our we had our goals list at the beginning of every year. We make a list of goals that our board wants to accomplish, and we didn't get all of them done. There were some that I was writing up the report at the end of the year, and I was like, we really just didn't have time to get to this. You're either some you're limited by something, um, and so being able to say, but you know, even if we didn't get that accomplished, even if that didn't work out, look at everything else that you did get done. Um, and my advisor helped me kind of put it in perspective because it's easy to get down on yourself and be like, nothing's going right or nothing. She's like, no, 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 no. Maybe 20%'s not going right, but you got this whole other 80% that's so really. You have to look at the whole, the whole picture. Exactly. Right. I think keeping the big picture and the big perspective. Right. And time management is, is really key, isn't it? Yes, yes. That's, that's hard for some people to do. Yes, it is. We. Um, but you learn that. You have to learn that or you're not going to be able to be in charge or be working with it. My friends make fun of me because I'm the calendar queen. Because I love, like, we do peace of retreat at the beginning of the year to kind of get all the new members on board. Yeah. 
and I'm always in charge of teaching time management because I always like I'm the person that at the beginning of the semester I'll color code my calendar like everything I know when everything's going to happen and um, the guy I'm actually dating now he doesn't plan he like he hates planning and I'm, I'm like asking him about things like two months away like what do you want to do for graduation he's like that's two months away. Why should I think about that? I have that? a colleague who's the same way, and I, I, my answer to that is I think I can get that from my mother. She's always jumping ahead, you know, exactly. and it's sort of a, fam a family thing, I think. Exactly. I tried to explain to him, you know, you don't understand. Once a week when I was in high school, we would have family meetings to get all our calendars together. <laughs> we would, like, coordinate and everything. He's like, oh, we just, like, do it on the fly. And I'm like, well, that's not how we work. <laughs> right. There has to be some semblance of balance, otherwise, you know, well, who's going where or what? Exactly, right? exactly. It's kind of working out because I'm making him plan a little bit more and he's kind of chilling me out about having everything <laughs> scheduled. So, but yeah. The time management is really kind of key then. And then the, that mortar board, do they, um, who, who actually goes to those leaders? All the student organization presidents, is that how? Um, it's really any leader on campus that we have nomination process. You can either self-nominate yourself or be nominated by someone else. Um, and it's just any, we try to focus it toward the younger leaders on campus because the upper leaders are kind of already connected. They've kind or of maybe already. maybe they've already gone to? Yes, or okay. they've already gone to it. So it's, um, it's a really good networking opportunity. So we try to focus on the freshman to sophomore leaders. We do have a lot of juniors that come as well. Um, I've been all four years. I think it's. Is it just is it one day or? Yes, it's one day. It starts okay. at like nine in the morning, goes till four in the afternoon. You okay. eat lunch. There's usually a couple of keynote speakers, which are really nice, and then there's sessions you can go to that focus on different aspects of leadership. Um, I think it's really cool because you kind of get to pick what you want to hear. So it's not something you don't get. You don't get to go to all the sessions, but you do get to go kind of listen to. Oh, I really need help with time management. I'm gonna go listen to that session or how to balance life, sure. and and work and organizations and everything else. Um, so it's. I think it's a really good opportunity to meet other leaders as well, and just that exposure to all the different opportunities on campus and all the different organizations. So it's of really which there are many. yeah, eight hundred over eight hundred and fifty different what organizations. Is. I could not believe that. Yeah, and it's so hard to know. Oh, I mean, you can get sucked into your own little world really easily, and I know this happens both academically. You get sucked into your school or your major, or you get sucked into like your one or two organizations, and it's really easy to lose the bigger picture kind of thing. And so I always enjoy going to leadership conferences and seeing how many student leaders are on campus and how many opportunities there are for us. And I think it's, I always think it's really with cool. other people, even yeah. as you're leaving. You know? Yes, exactly. Right. So, uh, um, does does the president also come usually to that to um, the, the, the mortar board? Yes. This year she was there because she was asked to be a keynote speaker. I don't believe she was there last year. Okay, but but yeah, you, if she's a speaker, she'll be there. Right, and the um, the attendance is usually pretty good. Yes, yeah. yes, I think we had three hundred, about three hundred come this year, uh, which is pretty good because we fill up um, Fowler Hall is what we kind of shoot. That's for. a nice size hall. For yeah, that size group. Otherwise, you're lost and you didn't. Yeah. The, other one the next stage, post Purdue. <sighs> post Purdue. Um, well, I did um, get a job with Procter & Gamble, so I'm going and you down. you said you'd intern there? Yes, well. I interned there for two summers, um, down in Cape Girardeau, Jackson, Missouri area. Uh, so I will be moving there after graduation to start my job at the, the Charmin plant. Um, I'm excited and worried and scared, kind of like all at the same time. I think it'll be... I think it'll be a good experience. I'm looking forward to starting work. That's all fine. It's just the whole being out on your own thing. I was talking to some people, and I was like, can you believe we're done? Like, four years is over, and I'm not going to go to a classroom next year. Like, that's the weird part. I've been in school for how many years now, and that's not right. going to be in my routine. Um, but at the same time, it's really exciting. I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to, like, kind of live on Is this the same plant own. that you did your internship at? Yes, oh, okay. yeah. So have you known them for maybe during the year that you already had a job? Uh, oh, yes, they asked, they gave me my offer when I left at the end of the summer. So I've been, yeah, this yeah. year's been kind of a, easier for me than it has been for a lot of seniors, especially with the economy. Right. Um, so I've been very blessed in that aspect to kind of like have that already figured out. Um, and it'll be nice because I'll already know a lot of the people I'm working with because I've worked with them for the past two summers. So I already have some friends in the work area that I can kind of go to or call if I need help with something or things like that, which is kind of nice. And we also, my aunt and uncle live down there, so I won't be, I'm not oh, being, nice. yeah, I'm not being stranded. Right. My mom feels better than I'm six hours away for that, so. <laughs> um, how large, how large is the plant? Is it a good sized plant? The plant is about, I want to say 1,200 employees, maybe. 
um, which is technicians and managers of the area. And it's kind of, it's really key in the, in the Cape Girardeau area. It's one of the biggest employers. Um, and it helps keep the economy stable in Cape Girardeau so they don't feel a lot of the effects of that. And it also keeps people moving in and out. So it kind of keeps the, the faces fresh in Cape Girardeau since it's one of the like top ten places to retire, I think. <laughs> so do they, have, do they have an orientation for you too, even though you've been there as an intern, will there be a... Yeah. Uh, and that, will they ro ro sometimes they rotate people around for the first year or two or... Um, I did, I interviewed with a couple companies that have that kind of program okay. where they, every six months or something you're moving. Right. Procter & Gamble is, I'm there until I either ask to be moved or I get promotion or something like that. So they don't, they don't have the same kind of moving around kind of program. Um, the way Procter & Gamble works is about every two years you'll get a reassignment, which could be within the plant, it could be elsewhere, it could be anywhere within the company. Um, and so... Sorry, I completely blanked on the rest of your That's, question. Uh, uh, whether they would be moved or whether the training session that would be Oh, the training session, yeah. Right. Um, I actually have about six months of training coming in. So I'll do, like, there's, like, a week of orientation where they talk about your benefits and kind of, like, the employee things you need to know. And then after that, I will do shift work. So I'll be working 12-hour days or nights kind of thing. Um, with one of the teams on the paper on a paper machine, which is kind of it's cool because you get to know the teams and you really get to know your equipment and things like that. But it's I'm kind of dreading it just because it's it's long hours, twelve hours for, but you like work two days and then you're off two days and you work a weekend, so it won't be bad. And then um, after that, it's the rest of the the training period is spent. You know, I think we travel to like Cincinnati headquarters and we go see like, some of the other plants, um, and we have. Like, it's kind of like school. Like, we learn, we get tested on different sections of the machine, um, and that's kind of, it's called Paper U, Paper University. So, that's like... Like Mac, uh, McDonald University, the Hamburg University. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. So, I have about six months of training when oh, I come in. That sounds very good. Yeah. And you've already, and you should be off the tape, you said you've already found housing. So yes. So, I'm very there. excited. So, my boyfriend and, and I... And having been there before, you know a little bit about this, the city. Yes, yeah. yeah. A anything that I forgot that I didn't ask or any closing or comments that you'd like to say as you look so. ahead? I really, I, I like this opportunity. I think it's really cool to, that we do an oral history. And as I mentioned before, I, I love sharing my leadership experience. It's been such a impactful part of my development and my, my growing up over the past four years. And so, What about athletics? Did you go to what, what, sports while you were here? Did you go to um, I went to freshman year and senior year, I went to most of the football games. Okay. Um, which I love. I think it's so much fun to sit in the student section and hear the cheers, and the students get so into it. Um, I never actually had the opportunity to go to a basketball game. That's my one regret. I wish I had made it to a basketball game. Um, and I've gone to some volleyball kind of stuff sure. and things like that. Um, so I think I think it's I think we have a great athletic program. Yeah. Um, Quite varied too, as yes. well, which a lot of people don't realize, and yes. it really is good and, and well supported, not yeah. only by the students faculty, staff, and students, but also the alums. And yeah. so it's just kind of, it's a big thing. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a gathering point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know, I think they're always a lot a lot of fun. The fight song and everything like that, Purdue Pride, I think it's, yeah. I think it's great. When I, uh, let me ask you this, what about uh, Purdue Tradition? Is there one that comes to mind? Do you think about uh, traditions? I think being in PISA and working in the union, I think one of the big ones is um, holidays at the union. As far as the huge tree that comes up, I, of course, get to see all the background, the back Brown kind of Let work. me ask you this: How do they uh, select the tree? Um, we get calls. I think researchers would be interested yeah. in that. We get calls all year round, um, as far as people locally. Yes, locally. Um, I think as far as like 30, 45 minutes away, maybe. Okay. Um, and there are usually people that are going to have the tree discarded because it gets in the way of power lines. It gets in the way of. Um, development and things like that and so they'll call if they have a really a large one that meets our size standards um, and say that they have a tree for us to come look at then our we have a committee the traditional committee is in charge of holidays at the union their director and one of our advisors go and view all of the trees that we've gotten calls about or we get pictures maybe and we kind of like select it down to like three or four and they will go and view all of them and look for you know holes in the tree kind of quality things well do we think that you know the base is going to be too big to get through the front doors of the union and that kind of thing um and then our board actually votes on it on which tree we like the best and um that's how it gets selected so that's great and then the people come don't they they come and it's interesting i, I think i always watch like to watch them get through the door which is a big 
challenge. Yes. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes, and sometimes it takes us three hours to get it through the door. And, and uh, yeah, they this year I think was a little bit tough. I think we almost, like, thought the tree was going to break in half. So, so they got ropes, and they're pulling it every which direction. So it's a it's a fun thing to watch, though. How do you do on the uh, guessing of how many lights are on? Do you get all kinds of numbers? Oh, we get all kinds of numbers. I don't even actually know what it is because they won't tell us. It's our advisors that have they know the answer. Um, or the one that's close in, right? Yeah, it's the one that's closest wins. Um, we get a lot of different guesses ranging all over the place. Of course, you have you have little kids who are like, I think there's like 100 lights on there. And you're like, well, it's a little bit higher than that. Um, I like to see them <laughs> being fill, like, filling out the cards and like passing the, the yeah. tree. Yeah, and it's funny. You get the college students that are like, okay, how long is a string of lights? How big a diameter is the tree? Like, they try to figure it out mathematically how many lights are on it. So, yeah, the guesses are kind of all over the place. Yeah, I bet. And, one, and the, uh, do you have an outstanding event that do, as you look at your, this point in life, any event that comes to, to mind? That's outstanding going event? To, it could be at Purdue or any place. Usually has to be the outstanding event in your life. Just in mind. Mm. I'm trying to think. I think one of my outstanding events is um, probably with PISA. One of our um, we had our recognition every, at the end of every year we do a recognition dinner and we recognize the outgoing board and their accomplishments and we introduce the incoming board. And this year, um, I got really close as a, as president you also serve as department head in the union. Um, so you get really close with the staff of the union and things like that. And um, I don't know, this year it was, it was a really nice ceremony and it was really nice to get this kind of celebrate with all of our friends and all of our advisors that we worked with for forever and and be able to to hand it off at the same time Whew, we're done um but i think that's one of the outstanding events in my mind was that was just one of the it's kind of the closing pieces of being at purdue and in my experience here and bringing it all together yeah, yeah exactly good. thank you very much shannon i appreciate that thank, thank you, you. Thank you.